And that happens with, you know, as you enhance the chin. Um, the next the next procedure that, again, not many, but that um, Dr. Fashikin uh, kind of alluded to and mentioned, which I think is very interesting, is this uh, filler underneath the eyes. Here's a, this is an, another non-invasive alternative to a common surgery, which is blepharoplasty, and I do, which, and this is something that I think uh, too many people in, in Beverly Hills get, and they walk around Rodeo at, uh, you know, looking kind of hollow-eyed. She has very noticeable dark circles under her eyes. Because the area was depressed, the shadow is falling into it and giving her the dark circles. It's not because she's puffy. It's not because she has, you know, ex I mean, it's really not really because she has extra skin. It really is because she has this collapse of this tissue right in here and a the shadow falling into it, and that's what gives her the, it's a volume loss, not too much of anything. And that's what's what, uh, that's what the issue is. Um, this came. This I filled in with Restylane. Five minutes later, she was like this. Um, ignore the lips. That was right, right afterwards, and they're a little big. I don't usually have these. Are, this is not my um, <laughs> idea of a of a good lip enhancement. <laughs> See, um, this is a this is a side view. Um, the effect is instant. It lasts for over a year, which is interesting. If you put Restylane in here, it lasts much longer than it does anywhere else. And I, I don't know why, but it, it, I've seen that it lasts a lot longer. Um, yeah, yeah, but it's, re, it's re, really painless. I don't, it, for some reason, there's not very many, you know the most painful part of the face? It's right here. It's the tip of the nose. It hurts like hell, or, and the lips too. Under here, it doesn't hurt. You can put a little bit topical, a little bit of ice, people don't feel it. It's really an easy thing to do. Um, so, and you can't tell that, any, that, that anything's been done here, you know, she's just, she just looks refreshed, and that's, that's what I want to hear. Um, again, same kind of thing. She looks tired, she doesn't look tired. She looks like she has puffiness under her eyes. You know, I don't, I don't, and I, I don't care. I don't care about this, the, the, the puffiness. All I care about is what's underneath, because I know that if I can fill this in, all the, any kind of puffiness doesn't matter. It's all become smooth and doesn't, and you can't see it. You can see how she's kind of, you know, she's puffy under here. She's not. Um, well, the only side effects that are noticeable with this kind of thing is occasionally you can you can bruise because there's a lot of blood vessels in this area. Um, here's one other thing that's such a simple thing to do, but you know, really has kind of pretty dramatic results. It's a injection right into this area. It's a, called the pregial sulcus. Um, I filled in her nasal labiae, and they look these these the nasal labial lines. But I also did something else. Um, the only reason you see her jowls is because of this point right here. Dimple is what tells the eye of the observer that these are jowls, and it's not her chin line, because here's her chin, here's this tissue coming down, and here's the dimple. You fill in that dimple, and you recreate a smooth, youthful appearing jawline. Again, you can use radiance. I usually use radiance. You can use Restylane as well. Just uh, it depends on how long that they, you know, people want it to last for. Um, nobody can tell that something's been done, and this is again very critical in these kinds of procedures. I never want to have anything be obvious. She just looks refreshed, and that's all I want to see. Um, this is something kind of new, where. I can do, um, I, was, I was convinced by this patient to do this. I originally thought that it was kind of, I don't, that I wasn't quite sure about this, but it worked. Um, he wanted to have a more defined jawline and he wanted to have a more defined angle of his jaw. Um, you know what, can you switch the lights off for a sec? You can see, you see what I'm talking about? And so he, and that's, an easy thing. We're converting now. We're converting him now from a from temporary to permanent filler, and he's very happy with that. Go ahead and turn it on, Simone. Um. So, Botox. It's not just for wrinkles anymore. I thought it was over when your campaign fizzles. Go superficial. Go Botox. That was pretty cool. <laughs> it's running in fifth place. The press was ignoring me. I looked like a walking cadaver. Anyways, um, 
No discussion of, this, of these kinds of treatments is complete without mention of the magical elixir of Botox. Um, it's a, common, a couple of common misconceptions about Botox. It's really not a poison. It's a purified protein. It is, the source of it is from the botula, botulinum bacterium, but it's been, it's changed around the laboratory and it's modified and um, it is not a dangerous substance. Um, the Florida scare that where they used, they, there was a guy, a crazy guy who was using industrial strength, animal Botox, uh, animal botulism, that is not Botox. That was a crazy guy using something very, that he shouldn't have been using. It's been used in 70 countries for 15 years, at least. The injections are painless. It takes 10 minutes to do. Um, the important thing about Botox in general for everybody to know is you really should know how many units you get, and that way nobody can mess around with the, you know, the dosages or watering it down or whatever. If you know, it's not ball, it's not CCs, it's not syringes, it's not areas, it's all units, and that's how it's. Each bottle comes in a, as a hundred units of, of of the material. So what you want to know is how much of that bottle is going into your forehead, how much is going in here, how much is going in here. It's very simple. If you remember, if you know your units, nobody can, you know, you know exactly how much Botox you're getting. So, and if you, and most people, and I charge by the unit, most people charge by the unit. Uh, at this point, it's all it being, people are going two units, and I think that's the most fair way of, you know, of doing Botox, because there's no way of, um, you know, kind of being shady with it. Um, this is, uh, Botox is everywhere. Uh, we know and love it, but many people don't know how it's used for facial sculpting. Botox is used to lift, you can use it to lift the lateral eyebrow and open up the eye. You see the difference here. You can put it in, it, you, even in this kind of photograph picture kind of thing, you can see how it's used. It opens up the eye, it lifts up the eyebrow, and it ch actually changes the position of this, uh, where this eye, where the eye comes, right here in the corner. So. It, um, it's also used to lift the corners of the mouth, which is not shown in here, but it's used to lift the corners of the mouth as if they're drooping down. It's used to decrease the appearance of vertical neck, neck bands. Now, there's, an, again, another thing that I have been recently doing that I think is very interesting in terms of Botox is Botox with teeth grinding. Can you hit the lights for a second? This is something, um, I've been using it to decrease the strength and bulge of the masseter muscle. Here, this is the primary chewing muscle. Um, for people who grind their teeth and they have TMJ, like her, it changes their life instantly. She stops grinding, her pain stops, her face becomes less square, more oval, more feminine, and she can stop using night guards and she's much more calm during the day. This, she, she was a, a different person after, after this injection. And she's, you know, for years, nothing would help her. These teeth guards, these guards, nothing really worked until a few simple injections and she was done. And it's just, it's a very easy thing. You know, what I'd like to do for just for a second is to go back through this with the lights off so we can see uh, some of the before and after pictures more clearly because some of them may not have come out. Um, over here, this is where I'm, you know, this is where I'm talking about doing the filler underneath the eyes, underneath the eyes, here for, to here, chin and the neck here, chin, nose here, the chin over here, chin over here and the nose here, nose up here, smoothing things out, over here, nose over here. And that's it. Now, so the only thing is, what's the future going to hold? And maybe it'll be a pod that you can climb into, press a button, and dial in the number of years that you want to look younger. And until that happens, we're going to come up with new procedures and better procedures that are safer and less invasive and more accessible to people. And I think uh, it's very exciting. It's a very exciting time for this kind of thing. So thanks. <laughs>